Hi, everybody. This is Bethany Brookins with Chasa, and I'm here to share some very pertinent information about our upcoming girls tennis season. Thank you so much for watching um, this rules meeting within our school. Um, just a first note about who your Chassa Tennis Committee members are. We've got Chris Roberts from Cheyenne, Cheyenne Mountain, who is our chairperson. Woody Oliver from Dublin, Peter Weirich from Arapahoe, Joe Brown, the athletic director at Niwot, Brian Bond is the athletic, athletic director at Valor Christian, Brandon Carlucci is the district athletic director at uh, Pooter Schools, Carl Buck is the athletic director at Overland, Tyler Zappia is the um, athletic director at Mountain Range, Mark Nutilla is the St. Mary's High School coach, and then Brittany Storgard from Holy Family. We also have Laura Jones from Regis Jesuit. With that being said, if you have any questions throughout the year, concerns, comments, please reach out to them with feedback. They're an amazing group. This group helps me put together the team brackets as well as the individual team brackets. Um, and they spend a lot of time scouring results and um, really trying to do what's best for our state. So a big thank you to them. Just uh, quickly, the USTA regulates the rules of tennis in front at court. Chassa may and does make decisions regarding compliance and modification of these rules. And um, to view the Friend at Court rules book, you can visit our website and then tennis, or you can just Google USTA Friend at Court. Those are our plain rules for the most part. Please note that tryouts will begin on February 27th. That is the first official day of practice. No teams or lineups may be set in stone before this point. And you must allow adequate time for tryouts to occur. Tryouts have to be ethical and a reasonable match must take place. The first to three games or just one 10, uh, 10 point or seven point tiebreaker is not a reasonable match when trying to set your lineup. Please note that if your lineup is questioned, you must be able to provide tryout results to defend a player's position on your team. And I will be asking you for that. Um, each team will consist of three singles players and four doubles teams. Please note if your school has just a very small team, for instance, if you have eight players, you have to fill the positions from the top. So you'll fill the one through three singles, plus then the two, first two doubles teams, and then you would have an alternate player. Stacking is not permitted um, in singles. Players have to compete in the order of the of ability with the best player on the team playing at number one at that number one position, the second best at number two, et cetera. Um, please note that this is one of the most common questions. If for some reason, especially in the spring, a student is out with testing or out with illness and they can't play, there's a very set procedure and protocol that you must follow. So if a player misses three consecutive matches, at that point on the fourth match, you must shift the entire lineup and the substitution code can no longer occur. So if you have just a one-off and your player is injured or sick and they can't play for one match, you can bring a JV player, you can substitute, but when the player misses three consecutive on that fourth position, they have to shift, you have to shift your lineup and make sure that it's ethical at that point. Um, in the past, there has been a date where you've had to set your lineup um, by a certain date. We don't have that anymore. What the tennis committee does require is that each player has to have played at the position they are seeking for the postseason at least six times prior um, to the postseason beginning. Schools are able to schedule 12 matches in zero tournaments or 11 matches in one tournament, 10 matches in two tournaments, nine matches in three tournaments. For now, this is the first year with eight matches and four tournaments. Please know that a tennis tournament is defined as either bracketed draws, crowning a champion in each position, or a dual team tournament. Um, the most important thing to note is that a tournament must conclude after two consecutive days. Um, please note that we have altered a few of the dates here that I'm about to go over with you by the tennis committee. We learned some good information in our first year of the boys season going through the team championship or the dual team championship format. And so we've tweaked a couple dates than what was previously published um, last summer. So as I've already mentioned, the first practice is February 27th, which means that the first scrimmage is Mar or the matches um, can be scheduled for March 2nd. Um, the dual team bracket is not going to be announced on a Friday like it was for the for the boys. We are actually allowing teams to play on that Friday and Saturday for additional results 
and the committee will not meet until Monday, April 24th to put together that dual team bracket. The first round of that dual team bracket is gonna be then Wednesday, April 26th. And the second round of the team bracket will be Friday, April 28th. Um, please note in the middle there is when the 5A regular season has to be completed. All matches have to be completed for league standing by that Thursday, April 27th. There's no exceptions even during bad weather. Um, in order to put together, especially for 5A, the teams into our waterfall for regionals, I have to have all of the league standings done and complete by 9 a.m. on Friday, April 28th. Please note that 4A can continue to play their regular season until the individual regionals begin that following week. Um, some of those matches may not count for individual regional seeding points, but you just have to work with your uh, regional tournament director on that. So individual regionals will then be Wednesday, May 3rd through Saturday, May 6th. The semis of the team bracket will be Tuesday, May 9th. And then the individual state bracket uh, championships will be May 11th through the 13th, the Thursday through Saturday. And then the following Tuesday is when we are going to be doing the finals for the team bracket for both 3A, 4A, and 5A. So coaching and continuous play. This has been effect in effect in Colorado for um, probably close to five to 10 years at this point. Please note that in Colorado, coaching can happen at any time during the match. It has to be off court as long as it doesn't interfere with the match. Um, a player suffering from a treatable medical condition may be allowed one medical timeout for three minutes if um, for the treatment of that medical condition. If a certified athletic trainer is available to evaluate and diagnose an injured um, athlete, the medical timeout does not begin until the diagnosis, the diagnosis is made. Also, a reasonable number of toilet breaks may be offered. As I mentioned before, coaching can happen, but it has to be um, continuous. So the next couple of slides are going to outline that. Um, so please note that between points, a maximum of 25 seconds is allowed, and your coaching has to happen between the, the 25 seconds. When players change end, ends at the end of a game, a maximum of 90 seconds is allowed. However, please note in the first game of each set and during a tiebreak game, play shall be continuous. Players shall change ends without rest, and your coaching should not delay that process. Please note that the 25 second time limit does not apply if a player has to chase a stray ball. And at the end of a set, there shall be a set break with a maximum of 120 seconds. The maximum time start from the mo the maximum time starts from the moment one point finishes until the first service is struck for the next game. Um, something that definitely happens in the spring is interrupted play. So when are players entitled to another warm up after their match has been suspended? Please note that players are entitled to a rewarm up of the same duration as the original warm up if the match has been suspended for more than 15 minutes. They are not entitled to a rewarm up after a rest period. Um, please remember for electronic devices, a player may not receive information via electro electronic devices capable of receiving communication such as cell phones and smartwatches while on the court. I know this can happen with an with certain, like I said, certain watches or even cell phones. So please make sure that players are not receiving coaching while they are playing. Different match formats. So in the regular season, schools can mutually agree to play a modified match format, including no ad, tie break in lieu of the third, et cetera. And really that just needs to be clear and consistent um, before the match begins so that everyone knows what to expect for that match. In the postseason for regionals and state, the match format will always be the best two out of three full tiebreak sets um, with third the, the full third set. Uh, please note that the tennis committee did pass a change during the dual team championships only. This will not be in effect for the girls, but it will be in effect starting with the boys season, where in the boys season, if you are on that dual team bracket, coaches will have the option to mutually agree to a 10 point, a 10 point tie break in lieu of the third. And that will be during the rounds of 16 quarters and semis. The finals, the finals will be a full two out of three sets, but please note that for the finals, play will stop immediately when one team clenches four positions. So this will mean that players will be will be called off the courts once the, that fourth match has been clenched. It also does mean that all seven positions will start at once so that everyone will be, be able to begin play 
but some players for those finals will not be able to complete. And that's really to celebrate the championship and to have that immediate excitement and that immediate celebration instead of waiting for hours and hours until all the, the matches have finished. If you do have disputes over score and line calls during the regular season when you don't have officials, please use a couple of these points and, and um, helpful hints. So you can ask your players to count all the points and games agreed upon by the players and replay only the disputed points or games. And you must play from a score mutually agreeable to all players. Again, a simple solution is call the score out loudly each time call balls out loudly and make sure that everyone is on the same page. Again, that's easier said than done, um, but just know that you have to go all the way back to a point where the score is mutually agreed upon in order to continue playing. Um, disputes over line calls should be resolved by the players on the court. And then if the calls cannot be agreed upon, each coach can come and assist with that, that process. Um, specific to line calls, each coach can talk and mutually agree upon a person to serve as a temporary official or um, someone to watch the lines to res resolve those line calls when asked. Just a reminder that Chassa values sportsmanship. Um, prior to each regular season match and tournament, the host school should read the sportsmanship as expectations outlined in the Chassa Bulletin. Coaches, ultimately your player's sportsmanship and their actions on the court are a direct reflection of you and your integrity. So please take action if, you're, if your players are not acting appropriately. We feel very strongly about this. Um, ideas for taking action could be pausing the match to address the poor sportsmanship right then and there. You can code your own player, point game match. And for any unsporting call or poor behavior, um, addressing spectators and parents immediately when it happened happens. Please note that this, um, this proactive approach is extremely beneficial and helpful. And also, if you can work with your athletic director to address your parents prior to the season, you can talk about sportsmanship and, and really outline how this is a school policy and a school expectation. And it's not just you trying to be mean to your parents. Again, no verbal abuse, profanity, racket abuse, ball abuse, physical abuse is um, should be put up with. Again, here is the point penalty system that the USTA can enforce. And of course, at regionals, there are typically officials. Um, and during the championships, there are officials. And this is when our officials will take immediate and swift action. Here's some more code violations. Please note that the, that the USTA rule, one of the main differences between the USTA Friend at Court rulebook and CHASA is our recovery rule. The USTA has a much lengthier rule and effect, um, but for our CHASA events for um, regionals, for our individual state championship, um, there is a 30 minute recovery rule between matches. So that means that you should be ready to play after 30 minutes. The, the main time that this happens is when we are doing playbacks for the individual regionals and you might be um, come off one match quickly and be put back on within 30 minutes. So please have your players well aware of this rule. There's some a lot of resources, net generation for high school coaches um, through net generation and the USTA, including those listed here. There's in also a lot of a variety of grants to help grow the game of tennis. This information can be found um, on the USTA net generation um, pages. There's also a team tennis manual if you're looking for turnkey practice plans, um, especially you newer coaches. This is a fantastic um, resource. This is how you can get the manual, again, usta.com, and then look up um, the team tennis manual. You can also reach out to net generation schools at usta.com. With that being said, I know I've covered a lot of information in a short amount of time. You are always welcome to reach out to me with any questions throughout the school year. Um, I hope you have a very successful season and please reach out if you have any questions at all. All the best to you um, and have a great season.